What up YouTube? As you can tell, this is an unboxing video, so let's get right into it. It's a box. And it is a Ender 3 3D printer. So I've been thinking about getting a 3D printer for a while now. And uh, on Reddit, uh, they started recommending, everyone was recommending for a first 3D printer to get the Ender 3. So I went ahead and I bought it. So this is gonna be an unboxing and setup video. And uh, as you'll learn, watching this video, I had zero experience with 3D printing. I haven't 3D printed a single thing, but I've done a lot of YouTube video watching and reading, and I'm a member of the Ender 3 Facebook group, and I've been uh, browsing their uh, uh, posts on there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and film me, probably making a fool out of myself, but setting this up. One thing I've seen from a lot of the posts on the Facebook group is that there's a lot of quality control issues that are easily fixed. It's just you gotta really inspect everything when you're putting it together. So let's go ahead and uh, jump right into this. Have the instruction packet here. Have a packet of parts I'll put down here. Uh, looks like a tool bag, spatula. Some of the railing. Got the extruder head. And I'm always bad with proper terminology. And plus on top of that, I'm not a 3D printing guru, so I'm probably gonna use the wrong terminology on some of these things. Um, a servo motor, probably for the Z axis since it has a coupling on it. And the heating bed comes out in one, oh, one piece. So this over here. Power cable, USA plug, power supply. And they say the most important thing is to go right ahead and switch it to 110, which is what we use in the USA. And I need to get a screwdriver, but I'll go ahead and do that promptly. Uh, the LCD panel. Let me just check all these home holes here. Another wheel assembly. And I believe that's it for the box. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip the power supply over to 110. And people were questioning on the Facebook group, the fact that it says 110 here and then on the actual power supply it says 115. It really doesn't matter because it, uh, the way the power supplies work, it just switches a transformer and then it's going to rectify it and use a, a transistor or, a, you know, electronically convert it to 24 volts. Uh, this model is a, uh, Ender 3 uses 24 volts. And uh, 
it's just a generic LED power supply. They did a 3D print it uh, end on it. Um, but someone said that the some models are coming with an injection molded in, but this one right here is definitely 3D printed. But in America, it's a 110, or usually modern uh, systems is 120, but whether you have 120, 110, it doesn't matter on the power supply, it'll take care of itself. Okay, this is attached to the this extruder head or hold on yeah I don't know the terminology the nozzle is attached to the base so I guess we actually should be getting out the instruction book at this point okay so this says Dear value customer, thank you for your order. Ender 3 is the latest 3D printer. Maybe the site will still need to be improved for much better. Your advice is very important to us. That was just a contact card. And here's a quality control card. Guarantee, username. Okay, let's get to the instructions. List one, all the assemblies. So this is it, just running back. So, list two. So you go down all the lists, you should check your parts. But I never do that, I find them as I go. So we'll do step one. So the first thing on step one is they want you to put on the vertical rails. So they want uh, four uh, washers, M5 by 45 screws and uh, two on each rail. So I'm going to go ahead and so people were complaining that their um, beds were wobbly. My bed is not wobbly. I'm just playing around with this access. My bed's not wobbly. It it does the wheel tension does have some tension on it, but it feels smooth full travel. So I don't know if I'm gonna mess with that or not. You see, that's where my inexperience with um, with 3D printers. And let me, so, another problem is that it's not, definitely not sitting flat. Let me pick a different part of the countertop. Oh. So on this part of the countertop, it does sit flat. Let me push on all four corners. So it could be that my countertop is bowed on this part. Oh, right here, it's sitting all flat. So maybe it was me. So I guess we'll just go ahead and continue on with the instructions. Well, so I, this assembly, I tipped it like this and a whole bunch of stuff fell out. And by a whole bunch of stuff, I mean the Z rod fell out. Oh yeah, I'll check that. A lot of people complain that their Z rods had a so my Z rod threaded rod does not look like it's bowed. That was a complaint on several people had. So let me unwrap.
unwrap these rails. Okay, so let me check out these rails. These rails do have different holes in them. So, and on, on here it says that the rails we want is L and R, and it shows the two dots is R. The two dots vertically is R, or the two holes vertically is R, and the two holes horizontally is L. So even though I do have another set of rails, this is the rails that they want. And then we need to find the M5 by 45 hardware. This bag does not look like it has the hardware. This bag has the hardware. The bag with the tool kit. Okay. The hardware does look like it's labeled, which the funny part is one of the complaints that I've been hearing is that the hardware not being labeled. But so far all these baggies are labeled. Let's see if I can find the M5 by 45. M4. M5 by 25. Here we go, M5 by 45. And it has uh, lock washers four pieces. So we're going to take four out for now. One, two, three, four, and four washers. And we have two extra washers and two extra um, screws. And let me see if the Allen where this comes. Yeah, this is the right size of Allen. Okay, so trying to see if this photo they show us is looking at the front or not. So the power supply module is on your left. So this is looking at the front and L is on the left with the two holes down towards the bottom. So this is L with two horizontal holes and the diagram shows, I don't, you probably can't see it here, down towards the bottom on top of the power supply. So you'll probably just have to take my word. So we're gonna carefully without trying to bend anything. I'm gonna put this on its side. Stick a screw in. And start threading it. Oh, I forgot the washer. You put the lock washer through the screw. Be careful not to cross thread it. So we're gonna get this one started. Then we're gonna put the second one in. Yeah, 
this one started. Okay, one tool I brought with me from the house. I mean, one tool I brought with me from inside the, from my workshop is this square because one thing I found out from reading the Facebook group is that it's important to make sure everything's square. So, let me go like this. And everything looks square. So let me just tighten this up. Now you are going into aluminum, so you don't want to tighten it up too much. But I want to make sure it's tight enough that the screws are recessed into the bottom. I don't know if you can see it too well. Okay, that one's as tight as I'm going to go. And this one's as tight as I'm going to go. And what I'm talking about is you want to make sure that this bottom surface is flat and the screws aren't sticking out, which they aren't. They're pretty much flush. And I'm going to check to make sure Okay, so it looks pretty much it's hard to get a flat surface on it. So I'm going kind of over here to get a flat surface on it. And it does look like a square. So I want to keep on moving on. So now I'm going to, R is going to have the two vertical holes and it shows the two vertical holes on the inside of the machine with the longer gap towards the top. So you have the two vertical holes towards the inside of the machine with the longer gap to the top. So it's going to go like this. Sure, I put it on the inside. Make sure you, you're, you're in the threads all right and you're not going to strip it. And I somehow, in all this excitement, just noticed that I cut my f finger open. So sorry for the blood, but I wiped that up. Bloody knuckles somehow. And again, they barely get flush. I just figured out on the bottom here, they do have some kind of absorbent pad. So the 
whole bottom of the rail doesn't um, isn't sitting on the table surface. So you do want to make sure they're flush. I'm gonna do my T again. And yep, it appears using my T that it is square. Well, we'll find out later on. Okay, that's good. Don't want to over tighten it because you are going into aluminum. That's good. That's good. Step one is done. Now keep in mind the way I have the camera set up, you guys are looking at the rear of the machine. Let's see what step two says. Step two says take two M5 by eight, take the S, oh, S is the, um, S is the LCD screen. So you want to take the M5 by eight, take the S, uh, the screen and put it in there. And then it shows the power supply. Now it doesn't show the screws to use for the power supply, but in small uh, red lettering above it, it says M4 by 20. So use M4 by 20 to put the, to mount the power supply and you use M5 by eight to mount the LCD screen. So we'll do the power supply first. So I said M4 by 20. M5 by eight, so I'll keep that for the power supply. M5, M4 by 14. M4 by 18, M5 by 25, oh, over here. M4 by 20, so there's three of them here, but we should only need two. And then there's a different size Allen, I bet. Yep. And then, Sorry to bump the camera there. Get it, got it started. Threads hanging over are a little long. I hope they don't go inside the power supply. And oh, don't want to cross thread it. Once again, you're just going into the case of the power supply, so you want things to be snug, but you don't want to over tighten. Okay. Okay, I went ahead and moved you guys to the front side. So now this pole is the right side. This pole is the L side. So those two holes, those two vertical lined up holes is where you mount the power supply. And then they want you to take out the screen.
and take out two and five by eight to mount the screen onto the frame. Now, before I mount the screen to the frame to make things easier to me, I'm going to hook up the screen. So I'm gonna skip ahead here. XP3. Okay, so I skipped ahead here to sneak peek where you mount the ribbon cable to the screen and you do it at XP3. And it is keyed so there's only one way you can mount it. And when you're looking at it from the back, it's all the way to the right. When you're looking at it from the front, it's all the way to the left connector. There is play here, so I'm going to lift the screen up and try to keep the screen level when I tighten it up. There, the screen is level. Okay, that's tight. That's tight. That's tight. Okay, step two is done. Step three. Step three is Z, which I don't know exactly. ZL, it's like an L shape bracket. And it's going to go down on the bottom. Okay, it's a Z. I can tell now it's a limit switch for the Z axis. Which is in this one bag here. There we go. It's on the little L. The limit switch. and you use the screws provided. So what you do is you turn them vertically to put them in the slots and then you turn the screw over to uh, so it locks into the slot. And it goes, let me double check. It goes like this. over here. Okay, I got one end, got the other end, and then when you start turning the screw, it should turn, the little nut should turn sideways, which it did not for me. Okay, so I'm gonna have to, you're gonna have to unscrew the nuts so they spin freely. And then when you put it in the slot, kind of 
There we go. So we got the top one to turn. But I'm not going to tighten it down yet because I bet you we have to Okay, they give you a measurement. They give you a measurement of about 32 millimeters. About 32 millimeters from the bottom to the bottom of the bracket. So do I have millimeters? That's in inches. Okay, 32 millimeters is 1.26 inches. So it's about one and a quarter inches. So we're going to move it down. Nope. Got to loosen it up. So from the bottom, one and a quarter, it's like right there. Oh yeah, I gotta point out I'm wearing my R.I.P. original Shea Carl beard tart shirt. And I remember Shea Carl used to always talk about his favorite word was package. And today, I received a package today. And let me check this again. Yep, 32 millimeters from the bottom to bottom, so about one and a quarter inches. Yep. Okay, moving on to step four. Step four, they want you to take the Z servo, Z axis servo, and mount it, and the Z rod, and mount it. But they do not show you. Let me check. Oh. Okay, here's the Z servo. Already has a mounting bracket on it, but it does not have does not tell you what screws to use. Although the way um, the way is countersunk. I would assume you use a countersunk screw. And let me check. Yes, it do, does not tell you what to use, but I assume you use a countersunk screw. So let's see if we have any good countersunk screws. Okay, we have M4 by 18 countersunk. We have M4 by 14 countersunk, but it comes with a nut. So it makes me think that It's not, we don't use this because there's actually drilled and tapped holes. These aren't countersunk. These are not countersunk. None of these other ones are countersunk. So I believe for the Z axis, you use the four by 18 pan head since it lines up with the countersunk. And you put it on the back side. Okay, I cannot see too well, but it's starting to pan out. Although maybe, sorry if I'm blocking the camera. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on this other light. I didn't want, I did not want to turn it on earlier because there might be a flickering and a hum, but I need the extra light right now. I'm filming this at midnight. Um, I work this evening and uh, 
this got delivered while I was at work and I'm like kid on Christmas Eve I couldn't wait to assemble it Okay, they seem to thread fine, so it seems like um, those were the right screws to use. And the way this is, you have to use it long ways. You can't get the Allen in there the other way, so. But then, of course, you're going into aluminum, so you never want to over torque anything, but you do want it tight. But I usually like to give it a little more. That's as tight as I can go with the short end. Well, I can fit it in. I just like giving it just a little more. Because I'm not no. Uh, like you move the bed. To you get it in. I'm not no hawk or anything. And it's tight. And let's see what else it says. I want you to install the Z rod. Okay, Z-Rod is fully seated. I'm going to tighten this clamp. This bottom one was already tight. The yeah, bottom one was already tight. Okay. Okay, so now turn that off because it was okay, so we finished step four putting the Z axis. Step five is to attach the um the nozzle. I'm gonna call it the nozzle. to M4, so it's, I don't know exactly what I'm doing now yet. I haven't figured it out, but I need two M4 by 16s and washers and the B1. Oh, it's the extruder, I believe. one is B1. Two holes. Okay, right, so this is B1. So they want B1, they want the extruder part, E. So they want this part. B1, and they want Two M by four, two M four by sixteens. Two M four by sixteens.
So it's showing there's going to be a single hole and then there's going to be two holes. So this part Okay, so the heads go this way. Okay, so now I gotta figure out, I'm definitely mounting this, I'm definitely mounting this to these two holes here. But I gotta figure out, there's, this side has two holes that are clearance for something, and then it's tapped on that side. No, these holes aren't tapped. So I gotta figure out if I mount it this way or mount it this way. Okay, I see. Finally got it right. So if you hold this towards you with the two closer threaded holes to the right and the part that's walled out facing towards you and you hold the extruder like this from the rear end, this um, this button head here fits through this piece that's already walled out here and the screws go in there just like that. And then your screws go, you reach the Allen through these top holes while the screws go through these bottom holes. So that took me a little bit to try to figure out what they wanted to do, but that's what you have to do. You have to try to look at it mechanically. I might have to do this off camera just because it's some finagling. Okay, got that one in. Okay, got that one started. Take this other one. You gotta put it in underneath. If I had small needle nose pliers, that would come into help here. But I'm doing this in my kitchen and not in my shop and I don't feel like going out there. And once again, oh no, never mind. You might be able to torque this down. Let me see if you can fit it in there. Yep, you can. So, like I said, you're going into aluminum, so you really don't want to crank into it, but you want to be nice and snug, pleasurable, I guess. Okay, I'm going to call that good. Okay, I'm going to call that good. Oh, it's nice and tight. Okay, so moving on. That was step five. So moving on to step six, and there's 12 steps. So we're halfway there. Six, you're going to take N and K2, and you're going to slide N onto the gantry, and you're going to take the same screws, M4 by 16, and screw K2 on. So, 
when you're looking at these, you definitely want to be paying attention to the orientation of everything. So the extruder head or the nozzle is wired up to So we know this is going to ride up and down like this and we know the nozzle faces the front so we got our orientations right put the nozzle in here and the wheels are really tight oh there we go and then we take N and we want to get all of our orientations right, so we want N. We want the wheels facing us. So you want the wheels facing you, and this to go flat. And then once again, there's another divot out. So you're going to screw that on like that. Gotta find a good way to lay this. Oh, I can lay it just like that. And it was M4 by 16s, right? M4 by 16s with the lock. Not far. Okay, I got that one started. Now there's a big controversy, let's see. So there is a little play when you tighten this down, so you gotta figure out which way you want the play. There's a controversy where the Z-axis gets bound up. Not a controversy, but the Z-axis has gotten bounded up on people and they had to remove the wheels on the far side to get good prints. So we'll see if I have a problem with that or if I don't have a problem with that. Okay, once again, you're going into threaded aluminum, so you don't want to over torque it, but you want it to be tight. Okay. That's tight, and that's tight. Okay, we're done with that step. Okay, step seven, you take the belt and you uh, put it around the x-axis. So, and all it tells you to have is the belt. Okay, so I have the belt, I'm gonna unwind it. And you just use the belt and you put these 
in the slot. Okay, so you want the smooth to be on the outside. Oh, interesting, we don't have, you don't have to worry about tension because we don't have the far sprocket. So you want the smooth to be on the inside. So, let's see which sides do I want to go. Oh, I guess the belt rides in this groove, so the belt goes under these wheels, I think, if I'm seeing correctly. Which I can't feed the belt under this wheel, so I'm gonna put the belt under there. Go over like that. Bring it back out. Oh, it goes in here. Around the stepper motor. Back through here. And then I'm going to move the gantry. Or the, like I said, I don't know the proper terminology. So you kind of slide it in the slot here. with the crimp then we slide in the slot here but there's nothing on the no sprocket on the end yet step eight you take the sprocket on the end that should already have the nuts on it which it does already has the nuts on it so like the other one you want to back off back it off so it can spin freely and the holes are offset so these holes are lower than the sprocket so we got to figure out which way we want the sprocket to be And uh, they show you, so they want this, so we're kind of oriented the wrong way, but is that the nozzle? Okay, the two wheels, these two wheels are facing up. And everything's flipped over. So this is the orientation they have. The two wheels facing up. Everything's flipped over. Wheels on the backside. They want the sprocket wheel facing up above the two wheels. So like this. So with the gantry oriented that way. Well, actually, let me see this. So in the diagram, hmm. Okay, so in the diagram, it clearly shows it mounted like this. But if you're looking real close in the photo, it makes it seem like the sprocket should be up, not down. So if they would have, if you flip it over, if they mount it this wrong, so I guess the best way to tell, yeah, on this other photo, they make it appear the same way. Hmm. Oh no, on this photo here, they make it look like it's down. So let's put it in and see how the belt rides. Well first, 
I guess we can check this side. So this side, the sprocket, the sprocket is slightly me. Let me look at it like this. Okay, on this side, the sprocket looks dead center. So if I mount it like this, on here. It is pretty tight. Okay, the belt is on. And if I go like this, you see in here it goes up in the rail. Oh, maybe if you mount it crooked, it's going to bring it up. Hmm. So I'm not going to mess with it now because I don't know, I can't see an advantage of either way, except for the fact that the way it's mounted now, when you put pressure on it, it naturally comes up. So I want to put a little tension on it. Oh, wrong size Allen. Yeah, I want to put a little tension on it. Wrong size Allen. Okay, I have three Allen screws. I, oh, one on the floor. Okay, third time's the charm. Put a little tension on it. Gonna tighten these. Yep, that one turned. Okay, that's tight. Good way to strip something out. Yeah, that one's tight. That one's tight. When I put tension on it, it did flip the bracket up a little bit for the offset. But I guess the big test would be to, let me grab a safe spot to move it back and forth. There is some tension on it, but the tension seems smooth throughout. Let me... There is tension on it, but the tension does seem smooth throughout. So I'm gonna keep on, keep on going. Step nine shows that you slide this onto the carriage, threading it through 
the hole here. So let me move it. So this wheel didn't come on yet. You guys are gonna go like this. Oh. So this wheel started. Gonna try to put them both down. Get them both touching at the same time. This wheel's on. Okay, we're definitely bending the Z-Rod. Okay, let me move it off. The Z-Rod is definitely... Okay, I see exactly what some of the mods were talking about with moving the stepper motor away. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loosen up the stepper motor mount. And actually, I'm not gonna, I wanna untighten this too. Okay, so now everything's loosey-goosey. Did I bend the Z-Rod? No, I don't think I bet the Z rod, but the Z rod definitely had a lot of pressure on it. Okay, so let's try this again. Okay, got it starting to thread. Oh, there we go. Okay, that seems... So let's tighten up this clamp. And Z rod is very loose. I mean the Z stepper motor. Keep on using the wrong terminology. You okay, got the clamp tight.
Okay, that actually seems pretty good. So let me tighten these screws up some. Okay, so if you're Okay, so if you're watching this video all the way through before you assemble yours because you wanted to see how a Yahoo does it and learn from his mistakes, what I would do is when you get to the part to install the Z-axis servo, I would and the threaded rod, I would put everything in, start it, but don't tighten anything up. I would then, when you get to the part where you put the Z gantry on, I would put everything on loose. Once you get it on loose, then I would tighten up the clamp and then tighten up the, the Z axis servo. Okay. And then with everything tight, Okay, with everything tight, there is pressure on it. But as far as the, when I spin just the motor, when I spin just the motor, there's It doesn't seem like it's bound up. Now it does feel like down here I have more tension. And I haven't hit the home switch yet, but the nozzle will go straight through the, um, down there the nozzle will go straight through the bed. So, I want to keep on pressing on because since this is my first build, I don't know how, I don't know what to expect as far as how tight everything needs to be. And they tell you to keep this loose so there's a little bit of movement where the threaded rod goes in. And it's not, it is, it's loose right now. So I'm just gonna keep it loose for now. Let me see how loose it is. Oh, that's a, another size Allen wrench. Yeah, that's loose, and I'm not going to even tighten it. I'm going to keep it loose. Okay, so I'm going to move on. step is B2. The top bar. So they want you to put the top bar on and they want you to use four and five by 25 the washers and there's some pretty end caps somewhere to put on.
is M5 by 25. I misread. And then profile cover. Oh. And then we need to have these covers. see how well everything lines up actually it looks like it lines up pretty well a little tight The hole is right there. It just might need a little bit of force to get it started. Yep. Okay, so that one hole was a little tight. Oh yeah, the top bar is on. Oh yeah, and then they gave you these little caps to put on the ends to make it look neat. And I notice I'm missing one on the base here. Okay, step 11 is to put on the spool. So they want the spool holder, so they want R1, R2. And uh, they want M5 by 8. And the T nut. So they're calling it T nut. M5 type, M4, M5 by 8, M4, M5 by 8. So, we're going to put the screws in, and then you put the nut with the flat end facing the spool holder. 
just want to start it and you want it to be loose so you can get it into the channel. Like that. And then we want to put it on the right. Like that. Okay, I'm filming on my phone because I went way too long in the build video, but I think I got most of the build video on video before the camera cut off, so we'll see. But basically, I finished putting on the sprule, and then uh, I had this 4 millimeter uh, glass that I got off of Amazon, a little smaller than the bed, but it works. I put that on. Um, I also ended up raising the Z limit up. Uh, higher than what they recommend it so then it doesn't slam the nozzle down onto the glass um, I hooked up all the wiring so they tell you what connectors to all hook up I hooked up all the wiring before I hooked on hooked up the power supply to the XT60 connector I took my meter out and I uh, turned on the power supply and hooked, hooked it up and I was getting a solid 24 volts I also went ahead and opened up the control panel down in there and uh, I checked the board for quality control issues made sure all the connectors were pinned into the board I'll post a video I mean a photo now showing that but uh, everything looked good so I had no quality control issues there and um, everything I've checked out so far doesn't seem like I have any quality control issues that I've been seeing on the Facebook group now uh, twice now moving around the different axes I guess I generated enough voltage that the LCD came on, so hopefully I didn't generate too much current or burn anything out. But I think I'm ready to turn it on for the first time. So, let me hit the power switch and let's see what happens.